Did you know that when a damp ferret runs up a druid's truss in Hammersmith, any dwarf is entitled to free milk? <laughs> no, of course you didn't. Those are some of the questions that have been suppressed from the public by the aliens from another world. And tonight, and on all future programmes, they will be answered. But we must be careful. They are everywhere watching us. And as the cosmic web of evil draws its net of frustration tighter around our loins, <laughs> knotting our tripes in a veritable <laughs> vice-like grip. No, I'm not talking about Hong Kong underpants. <laughs> Tonight, our probing spotlight bears down on the machinations of them and the other aspects of the evil that is surrounding us. But take heart, fellow Britons. Dawson Control, from the heart of television's heavily mortgaged centre, <laughs> is go. Pay at the kids 15. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight our subject is money. The sins of mankind, greed, avarice, envy, desire, and Max Bygraves LPs. <laughs> are mere aspects of the central evil, which is money. Money. The aliens invented it in order to enslave us all in the grip of materialism. Money. An awesome requirement that sends our blood pressure up and down quicker than a call girl's tights. <laughs> Politicians use the word money as a guide to the better life when they want votes. The communist says one for all and all for one. In other words, if he's got now, he'll share it with you. <laughs> the socialist wants to get rid of the idle rich and they've succeeded. Now we've got the idle poor. <laughs> the conservative would like to generate more money by the sweat of your brow and the liberal says I hope to God I don't lose my deposit. <laughs> When you think back to when you were born, you know nothing of money. I mean, I came from a very poor family. Up to the age of 15, I thought knives and forks were jewellery. <laughs> and yet, you know... <laughs> Mummy always did the best to give me something nourishing to eat. I've known the times when she's taken the bones from her corsets to make a pan of soup. <laughs> I can't forget those days. I never had any shoes. My father used to black my feet unless my toes were black. <laughs> All the clothes we wore were cast-offs and hand-me-downs. You know, something? I started work at 14 in a bib and romper suit and bowler hat. <laughs> I always felt sorry for my sister. She got married in a pith helmet, truss and spats. <laughs> <laughs> I hated Christmas. The Christmas dinner was always the same, Peruvian woodcock. <laughs> it was a black pudding with a feather stuck in it. <laughs> Do you know, I can only remember being given one Christmas present by my father. It was a do-it-yourself electric train set. <laughs> Turned out to be all a fuse wire and a platform ticket. <laughs> Mind you, Dad didn't like me. He used to play some rotten tricks on me, like telling me for years the gas meter was a piggy bank. <laughs> Once a month, he used to take me to the country and make me run up and down all day across a certain stretch of the fields, which was exhilarating for me. I was 27 before I found it with the rifle range at Bisley. <laughs> you know, I was starved of love and affection. The only people who picked me up and cuddled me were scientists. <laughs> or short-sighted poultry breeders. <laughs> Mother used to look at me on the floor. She used to say to me, Father, I don't know what to make of our son. I mean, Father used to say, have you thought of a rug? <laughs> <laughs> I 
See, the problem was I came from a big family. In fact, there were so many wet nappies in the kitchen, there was a rainbow in the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> I said to my mother, I said, doesn't Dad use the rhythm method? She said, yes, he goes to bed with a fiddle. <laughs> I only had one change in happy. <laughs> After 12 months, he used to hire me out to sit in allotments with post rhubarb. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, things could have been better, but my father was superstitious. He wouldn't work if there was a Friday in the week. <laughs> so I never really knew much about money. Now, they say that money talks. Was well, all it's ever said to me is goodbye. Do you know one of the reasons why none of us are any good with money? Well, I'll tell you. It's all part of the alien plot to make us reticent about, about money, as if it was sort of, well, a dirty subject. For instance, do you ever tell people how much you earn when they ask you? Of course you don't. You keep saying, oh, doing all right, keeping the wolf away from the door, <laughs> making hands meet, getting by. Now, we may have good cause to be embarrassed about the poor state of the pound these days. In fact, we're so ashamed of it, on the new issue of banknotes, the Queen's wearing blinkers. <laughs> <laughs> but we've always treated the business of money matters as if it were, well, mucky. Now, last week, our hidden cameras were able to film this scene. Oh, Rodney, lad. Come in. Sit down. I want to have a little talk to you. Yes, Dad. You see, uh, I thought, well, your mother thought that uh, now you're getting older, almost a man, as it were, that you and I ought to have a little talk about things that really, well, about... Uh, I know, Dad. Cash. Rodney, please. Your mother might hear. I will not have you using four-letter words like that in this house. <laughs> it's Anglo-Saxon. I don't care what it is. It is Anglo-Saxon. Now, there's a time and place for it. I'm sorry, lad. Yes, I, I do want to have a talk with you about the facts of uh, money. I expect you lads at school call it... Um, Cash. Cash, yeah, yes. Yes, Dad. I expect you uh, tell jokes about it, too, eh? Oh, yeah. Yes. Have you heard this one? Mm. This gorilla goes into a bank and asks to change a hundred dollars into pounds. And the man thinks, huh, it's only a stupid gorilla, so he only gives him 20 pounds. And then he says, funny, we don't get many gorillas in here. And the gorilla says, at, at five dollars to the pound, pound I'm not, not surprised. surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we used to whisper things like that when I was at school. <laughs> but you know, there's, uh, there's more to money than a few dirty jokes. I suppose so. I imagine you've, uh, you've experimented a little and tried to make money on your own. Well... Well, um... don't worry, lad, don't worry. Everyone does. Nothing to be ashamed of. I heard that if you did it too much, you went broke. <laughs> <laughs> Nonsense. Who told you that? The economics teacher at school. He said they're going to show a film about it. I wish these teachers would leave this sort of thing to us parents. You see, to some, money can be, well, sort of sordid. But believe me, when two people come together to make money together, two people who really need it, then it becomes something fine and beautiful and worthwhile. Dad, hmm? do you a mother? I mean, do you actually... Oh, yes, yes, yes. We make money together. Of course we do, yes. <laughs> Still? Oh, yes, yes. Takes a bit longer now, of course. <laughs> but uh, it's all quite natural and normal, you know? Of course, some people aren't normal about money. Now, you want to steer clear of them, son. Which people, Dad? What do they do? Well, they'll come up to you and suggest that you give them some of your money and a little later you'll feel better and then you'll get your money back and so on. Well, they can't help it, they're sick. They, uh, something wrong in their makeup. Who are these people, Dad? They call themselves double glazing salesmen. <laughs> now you be careful of them. Okay, lad, off you go. Thanks, Dad. But actually, there was something I wanted to tell you. Oh, yeah. Well, you see, I think I. Well, I've got a girl into trouble. You've got a girl into trouble? Well done, lad. Well done. You're first, is it? Oh, you're one of mine, all right. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> But money is a complicated affair, and when in doubt, we turn to the experts. Tonight, we're very fortunate to have with us Professor Max Hedrew, and he's joining us now from the Birmingham studios. Oh, Professor, I wonder if you could help us. I'm something of an e economic simpleton, 
Could you explain to all of us exactly what inflation really is? Certainly. Inflation is a generalized socio-economic escalation whereby the rate of uh, industrial non-expansion is uh, dragged <laughs> together so that the uh, money, and it gets sucked into a cash spiral, and the uh, infra-economy gets uh, turned into a downturn. Uh, could you explain that in, in simple terms? As a nation, we're knackered. <laughs> well, that was his opinion, but what do the gnomes of Zurich think of the British economy? Now, we have a direct, direct link to that, to Geneva, and I'm about to ask the famous economist, Dr. Manfred Schmidt, what he thinks is wrong with the British economy. Uh, wie geht's, Herr Willkommen mit dem Programm. Was ist los mit der Ökonomie der England? <laughs> Bloody square <laughs> They lost twice, they seem to forget that. And I don't care what they think, this country's still the best country in the world to live, it's the safest. If there's ever a third world war, the Russians will never invade us. And the can't, there's nowhere to park. <laughs> Anyway, as far as I'm concerned, all this money business is about as clear as Nabby's tea. And I don't think we're skinned, not quite. Even on this programme, we've still got a few quid left. <laughs> but where we get it from is none of your flaming business. <laughs> if you're in Water Street tonight about 10 o'clock, what a performer. <laughs> anyway. The mint makes a hundred of these pound notes every minute. That's slightly more than a minor on overtime. <laughs> where are they all? More than 75% are stuck on nails in Arab lavatories. <laughs> Another 20% are found in German monopoly sets. <laughs> and the rest? They belong to the makers of Desmond O'Connor's Dimple Cream. <laughs> it's no wonder that the poor old pound is waning by the minute. People are losing interest. Like me, when the wife takes her teeth out. <laughs> I thought, look at her monsoon ditch. <laughs> what a sight that is. You know, my wife is the only woman I know who can pull a bottom lip over her head and use it as a bathing cap. <laughs> but give the mint its due. It's now come up with something to replace the pound note. It's called the fiver. <laughs> I can remember a time when the fiver was about as rare a sight as a pregnant nun. <laughs> I think the value is still there, it's just that people don't shop properly. Now, for example, here is Nationwide's shopping basket for the week. Now, look at it. It's a betrayal in the art of practice and economy. Now, as a criteria of instance, here is Dawson's five-pound basket based on a sound economic footing. <laughs> Let me show you what I mean. One loaf of bread, 17p, the staff of life. One half bottle of whiskey, <laughs> £2.25. And it's a good one from Kilmarnock, from a cellar. One six-pack of beer, £1.20. One Havana cigar, hand rubbed. Three bottles of British wine, culled from the vineyards of East Acton. <laughs> One pound. Now, what does this add up to on our computer? How do they justify this cost of living? Well, never mind, we Britons are used to this. We'll tighten our belts, we'll get rid of the luxuries. Mind you... The state of the pound doesn't always depend necessarily on how the British economy is doing. It depends on how everybody thinks our economy is doing. The currency market today is as volatile as an Italian taxi driver and just about as insane. And it requires a special sort of person, cool and quick-witted enough to manipulate millions at the end of a telephone. Been rather quiet so far, really. Yes, yeah, very quiet. We haven't had a world economic crisis now for about... About three quarters of an hour, isn't it? I don't like it. It's unnatural. It must be at least ten minutes since we had the last big run on the pound. Big rush on the pound? Hello, Tokyo. Rumors of big rush on pound. Sound sterling now! Oh, no. 
I wish you'd learn to keep your voice down. That is the third recession you've started this morning. <laughs> Look what you have done to the pound. Oh, gosh. It's disastrous. Three points down against the dollar, five against the Deutsche Mark, seven against the franc. Yes, but at least it's holding its own against the luncheon voucher. <laughs> the Bank of England intervene. The Bank of England have intervened. Oh, my God. It must be really serious, then. Hello, Tokyo. Situation so serious, Bank of England have intervened. By Spanish! By Spanish! By Look, calm down, will you, chaps? It's nothing, really. Honestly. Quick, freedom these. <laughs> ah. Listen, chaps. Britain's latest trade figures. Oh, great news. Exports are up. Productivity is up. You all know what this means. Stability. The government able to get on with its programme. <laughs> listen, chaps, listen, listen, quiet a Haven't finished yet. <laughs> Imports are up, which means a loss of confidence in the city, which will probably lead to firm, middle-of-the-road legislation. Hello, Tokyo. Britain in rut. So <laughs> <laughs> Hey, How's the pound doing now? I don't know. It's gone so low, I can't find it. <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, God, no. What is it? What is it? The wife's mother's coming for the weekend. <laughs> you idiot. You pushed a pound down ten points. Down ten points? Shh. It is essential we pushed a pound up again. For economic reasons. No. I'm going on holiday tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> Got it. I hear the dollar isn't doing too well. Hello, Tokyo. Reports of dollar not doing too well. <laughs> Start some speculation of our own, eh? That's it, that's it. Right, watch this. I hear Carter is appearing on TV tonight. Hello, Tokyo. Sell all dollars. Sell all dollars. <laughs> Chancellor Smith cited as correspondent in divorce suit by Mrs. Bresnet. Hello, Tokyo. Sell Deutschmarks. Brilliant, brilliant. It's plummeting like a pranged Messerschmitt. How are we doing? The pound improved? No, not really. We've just dragged the Deutsche Mark and the dollar down to our level. <laughs> oh, well. Time for a quick bite before the afternoon slump. <clears throat> Have you noticed, whatever happens, yeah. he always ends up smiling? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Tokyo. Good news for Pound. British all at lunch. <laughs> What a terrible indictment of our culture. Do you know, if my father could see what was happening today, he'd turn over in his quick line. <laughs> everything was so simple in his day, when one door shut, another one shut. Now everything's so complicated, the average man in the street can hardly be expected to know what's going on. Excuse me, oh. sir. Well, I could explain everything, officer. I was looking for my ball. Oh. I'm asking the average man in the street. I say, people you're not working. Angela Ripon, I. No, I'm afraid I'm not. Oh, what a pity. I'm a great fan of hers. I think she's marvellous. The way she reads the news bulletins with such dignity and sophistication. Apart from that, she's got a lovely bum. That's why I'm sorry, Angela Ripon. Uh, but I would like to know about what you know about the people who work in the stock exchange. Stock exchange? A bear, for instance. Bear what? Oh, bulls. Some of them are bulls. Yes, Severance and the Marks and Spencers were coming down. Marks and Spencers? Coming down? Yes. You mean right down? Yes, well, when they come down enough, then the balls will <laughs> rush in. And I'll be at the head of them. I'll lead them. Ooh, have you any Marks and Spencers? Well, get them off. <laughs> I feel as though I know that fella. <laughs> now, here's an astonishing but true fact. Even in these modern times, there are people who don't know what money looks like. My wife doesn't, because it's never in her purse long enough. <laughs> you won't believe this, but last month she actually complained that she couldn't manage the housekeeping on five pound a week. <laughs> I didn't argue. I doubled it, now she gets five pound a fortnight. <laughs> but you know, there are people who never touch cash. Instead, they use these things. Credit cards. Now, these things have dramatically improved the quality of life. In the old days, say you needed a new car battery. Now, if you couldn't afford it, you didn't have it. Now you just pay for it with your credit card 
and three months later, when you can't pay your credit card account, they come round and repossess your car. <laughs> <laughs> There's no doubt about it that credit cards are now becoming universal. I went down to my local pub the other night, it's called Twiggy's Chest. <laughs> <laughs> because the beer's flat and warm. <laughs> All the lads in the vault were playing shove access. Now, of course... <laughs> not everyone is accustomed to credit cards, not yet. I dined up in a restaurant last night in Paddington called the Happy Diner. And the only card they didn't take was the Diners Club. But in general, <laughs> cards are the thing. Yesterday, I popped into the bank to see if they'd run out of red ink. And the manager came across and shook me warmly with the throat and asked me if I wanted a credit card, and I told him I wasn't going to have my life ruled by a nasty bit of plastic. And he said, well, in that case, I shouldn't have voted Conservative. But the truth is, <laughs> these days, credit cards, those little oblongs of plastic, get you where you want to go. At least that's what, what we found. Barker card? No. American Express? No. Donald's Club? No. Access? Ah, just the thing. <laughs> See, access takes the loitering out of loitering with intent. It is my considered opinion that when the aliens invented money, they knew it would create crime. But there is a way to stop the present crime wave. It's quite easy. All you do is nationalise it and then it'll never pay for itself. <laughs> right, stick them up. Yes? Stick them up. Pardon? Stick them up. I can't hear. <laughs> Stick them up. And over the money. Do you have a bank card? <laughs> no, this is a gun. Perhaps a passport. But I want the money. Yes, well, uh, if you fill this form in, please. <laughs> what form? It's a credit transfer. Look, you don't seem to understand. I'm robbing the bank. Oh, a direct debit. <laughs> yeah, a direct and very much to the point debit. Yes, yes. Uh, is this likely to be a monthly arrangement? <laughs> I mean, uh, we provide a special service. Oh, blimey. I mean, how many O-levels do you need to recognise a bank robbery when you see one? <laughs> this is a gun. Yes, it is, isn't it? All right, then. You know, you'd be well advised not to take the money away from here. Eh? Well, I mean, we could regard it as a loan, and you could earn about 22% oh, on it. We'd only charge you 15. I want to spend the money, don't I? In Copacabana. Copacabana, that's uh, Brazil, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, yes, the, uh, oh, not a very good rate of exchange, I'm afraid. <laughs> Still, you'll be wanting some traveller's checks. You're not a student, are you? I'm beginning to think so. <laughs> no, you see, uh, because you could have a plastic wallet, a clipboard, no bank charges, and a ream of full scan. But what sort of a bloody bank is this? I can't deal with a simple robbery. Do you wish to complain to the manager? No, I want the money. Well, you certainly know your own mind, don't you? Yeah. Have you ever thought of a career in banking? No. Don't bother counting it. <laughs> I've got to account for this lot at the end of the day, you know. <laughs> Here, what would you throw those out for? They're torn. <laughs> well, but don't give us stuff then, whether they're torn or not. But I swear I'm going to use this gun, mate. We have a shooting club at the bank ourselves, you know. All right, then. Oh, it's about time. time. Can you manage that? Yeah, right. <laughs> Just hold it right there. <laughs> yeah, look, look, <laughs> if I give it back. You, uh, you have a car? Yeah, it's a Ford Cortina. Is it fast? Yeah. Good, you drive. Hey? <laughs> I'm sick of working in this dump. Come on, let's go! <laughs> well, let's face it, what does wealth really mean? A man with £10 million in the bank is no happier than a man with only £6 million in the bank. Very soon, my boy, all my paintings, all my property and all my money will be yours. No, no. Yes, everything. 
No, we'll leave something. We're not totally unreasonable. <laughs> yes, that's another thing, income tax. I received a final demand last week. I'm not saying I owed a big amount, but on the front of the envelope was written chapter one. <laughs> but the one who suffers most is the poor, harassed housewife. Another week gone, you know, it's Thursday, I haven't got a penny in my purse. Hey, well, who has? I mean, it's all this inflation, the cost of... I mean, this money goes nowhere now. Don't remind me. Do you know the only way I can make ends meet is mm. by putting my two youngest in the same nappy? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the price of everything is ridiculous. I got some fish of the week, a rainbow trout cost 75p, only had one gill. <laughs> it was laying on my plate, sucking the vinegar off my chips. <laughs> and me, that butch, it's 12, two loin chops. 56p. That's 12 and a half shillings in the old money. <laughs> well, that's great. Well, there's no living. I just do not trust that butcher on the crescent. What, him with the bad breath and the acne? That's the one. Oh. <laughs> do you know? I don't know where he gets his meat from. He charged me £1.85p for a leg of lamb. Who eat it? <laughs> do you know? It was so thin, I'm sure it was pinned to the skewer with celery. Oh! <laughs> Who is a monkey, that one? Oh. Well, I flicked cigarettes off in his empty scale once and it weighed 11 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know we bought a turkey off him last year? Yes. When I plucked it, I found a shrapnel scar. <laughs> Our bird lifted one of his wings and we found somebody written underneath Kilroy was here. Well, you were a fool. I mean, you should have had a cape on. With the money Bert gives me, I'm lucky to have a jumper on. <laughs> it's all right for you, sister. Oh, don't well. You married well when you married Leonard. I've had a big mistake, and I know it when I'm married. He's always out of work, my Bert. He's been on the dole so often now, the Labour Exchange have asked him to MC the staff dancing. <laughs> <laughs> my mother was right, I should never have married him. Oh, I can see on. her face to be oh, dying day on. old. Love, love. Keep come your on. bowels open and trust in God's rule. I can't go to anymore. I'm sure your Bert has hidden facets. Oh, he's a big lad, thank God. <laughs> I mean, you can't live off that all your life, can you? <laughs> More's the pity. <laughs> hey, I saw your Bert coming out of the bookies the other day. Oh, he's always got money for that. Oh, yes. oh, he's got money for that. I tell you what, I didn't like the look of him. Well, I don't miss out, but he's good to the kids. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never told you this before, but I've always felt, well, it's a bad mother. Oh, that's very nice of you to say so. Well, I don't know. Leonard's been... you've done very well with Leonard. And oh, well, I must say. You've made a good marriage for yourself, yeah. but you seem to live so much better than we do. You always have dripping on a Friday. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must confess, we do have the odd little luxury, oh, you, you know. Do. Yes, campy and chips. Oh, I've seen those tins of empty, lusty soups oh, outside okay. in the dustbin. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not cheap, are they? No. Last week, we had Coco Van. Oh, we tried that once, but there was no room in our mini. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, your mind is on one level. I blame Bert for this, you know. He's, you've lovely. never been the same since you married him. I don't. I haven't forgotten that wedding. Ooh. I mean, you'd scarcely cut the cake before he was dragging you up upstairs. <laughs> I didn't give you time to get your socks off. Oh, I know. <laughs> now I've time to knit a bloody pair. <laughs> so there you have it. Another example of how we're being got at by them. But there is hope. Always remember, the one thing that money can't buy is extreme poverty. <laughs> From Dawson Control, good night. Yeah.